Well, we're finally ready to study the three sequence types in an orderly manner. I have been kind of throwing them at you this way and that without us understanding them deeply, but, but now we will understand everything about them. There are three sequence types, STR, tuple, and list. I give you an example of each. And I'm looking at the zeroth element of each, which is the first element. That is called accessing. That's when you put your sequence with square brackets, and that's always reference if it's accessing, not changing anything. What's nice about accessing in Python is that you can access from the end. If I say minus one, I get the last element. So the last element of string is a C. If I ask to ask, if I, if I try to access an element that doesn't exist, like minus four string, minus one, two, three, oops, I get an index error. This integer in here is the index. Okay, that's all about accessing. Slicing is very interesting and useful. It's like accessing, but it's has a colon in it. Square brackets with a colon in it and possibly two integers. That's the usual way. We'll see some other things. So here I have a string, and when I ask for the slice from 4 to 8, we start at 4. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Does not go into the answer. I get a new string, not that string, a new string with those elements in it. That's slicing. It is useful over and over. You can, although I have never had occasion, to add another colon and a step size or an increment size, whichever you like. And that way we only got the fourth and the sixth indexes coming out. That step size can be negative and we'll see a good use for that right away. So that starts at six, never gets to the two. That's the six, five, four, three indexes. The syntax goes like this. You give it a start index, an almost end index after a colon, and you may, if you wish, add another colon and the increment. You may, if you wish, skip the first integer and just do colon three. That will start at the beginning and it'll never see the three. You can skip the second integer. This will start at three and it will go all the way to the end. So that might be useful. You can skip them both, and that's going to give you a slice from the beginning to the end. But the important thing about that slice from the beginning to the end is that it copies out the data, and it gives you a new sequence with the data copied into it. So it is independent, somewhat, from the first sequence that you are slicing from. Here, I like to show you this. Byte equals wholesale, so that you get a feel for the for the reason why the range concept's a good idea. If I say buy it up to five and buy it from five on, that's all the characters in wholesale. I didn't have to think about minus one goes where, or is it plus one, like that. That's error prone. I'll point out that unlike accessing, which can give you an index error, Slicing will never give you an error. It might give you the empty object. Okay, the, here is a useful negative increment. It'll reverse the sequence. So here I have twist, remember that? That somebody danced. And I'm going from the beginning to the end by minus one. But if I'm going in the negative direction, that means I'm going from the end to the beginning one at a time. So that somebody danced backwards. Sometimes that's useful. And I think most people know that when you do that. Even though it's kind of strange syntax, it's a little bit famous. 
we are looking at what all three sequences have in common. So here is something else. They have in common concatenation. We've seen that. To concatenate, both sides of the plus sign must have the same sequence type, and the result is always a new sequence and the same size and the same type as the operand of the plus sign. Now the plus equals the augmented assignment is just a little different. Here we can plus equals a string into a string, a tuple into a tuple, but with the list you can plus equals any sequence type. Now that's our first vision of the fact that a list is very flexible. Here we have a list and I am plus equalsing in a list. It's a four in a list. It's called a singleton list when there's only one item in it. And I see, there it is, that worked. Here I'm doing a tuple and there are the elements of that tuple put into that list. Here I have a string ABC and the A, the B, and the C are in the list. That might be what you wanted. If not, if you wanted the ABC to be all together in the list, you will like putting the square brackets around that to keep it as one element. People often use plus equals to accumulate an object, accumulate elements into a sequence. Here I have an empty list, new list. Nothing in those square brackets. I'm going around five times. Every time I get a new I, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and I'm putting it in the list notation, the square brackets, and plus equalsing it in there, and I see I have it. All those came into my list. That's accumulating. We just stick things in there one at a time. To do that with any of the sequence types, you have to know the empty, and we just saw that the empty was square brackets with nothing in it. We've seen before that the empty string is string delimiting, but nothing in it. And the tuple is a pair of parens with nothing in it. All three of these empty sequences are falsehood. Like the zero is false and all the numbers are true. All, of, all three of these are false. If there are data in these sequences, then it's a true sequence. It's also good to understand the singleton. That means the one element sequence. For a string, no surprise, it's a one element string. For a list, no surprise, we've even seen it before, it's got one element in a list. This one is the surprise. It is the comma that makes it a sequence, and the absence of parens make it mm, the absence of square brackets makes it a tuple. That is the singleton. Sometimes it's hard to capture. We'll look at some something to help us. Here I have a tuple and I want to put an F in there. So I have DEF and so I say plus equals. And that crashes. It says I can only concatenate tuple not string to tuple. Oh yeah, that's a string. No good. So intuitively you might put some parens around it like you would the empty sequence and nothing changed. The parens, it, it looks like it grouped it together with itself, didn't do a thing. But if I say F with a comma, it goes right on in there. Now you might have a style guide that wants you to put parens around all of that. I would not complain. I just want you to understand that comma makes it the sequence. Repetition, the multiplication sign, is supported for all three sequence types. Here we have woodchuck, wood, comma, chuck, a tuple. Three times that gives me woodchuck, woodchuck, woodchuck. Here we have a string kitty with a space so that when I do three times that, I get kitty, kitty, kitty. Here I have a chord, 
do me so i wish i could sing it for you but um nope two times that gives me two octaves of that chord we have seen for many times since almost the beginning that four and in work together to take you through a sequence for neighbor in neighbors we print our neighbor at this we don't know is that a tuple or is that a list we don't know till we look at the output it could be a string all we know is that we're printing out one element at a time so I guess we've got an Amy, a Joe, and an Alice, so we know it wasn't a string, but we still didn't know if it's a list or what. These neighbors are definitely a list. In, you can use and will use without the four. It's the piece of the situation that does a loop compiled C loop inside the interpreter and saves you from having to do a loop. So it's a really good thing, that little in. I have some neighbors and I say, Amy in neighbors. And it says true because she is. And this is a common situation. If Al is not in neighbors, put her in there. And now there she is. In keyword. On this line, if Al is not in neighbors, you might think that's not quite English. Maybe you'd think it was more English if not Alice in Neighbors. Both work just fine, so do the one that you understand better. Here we have six built-in functions. And it's pretty obvious what each one does, except wrapper. STR will take any object. It's a function you make its argument be any object and it will produce a string representation of that object that is as user friendly as it can figure out how to do but it will never crash similarly wrapper will always give you a string of an object and never crash but the result that wrapper give is sometimes different than the result that string gives because wrapper doesn't care about readability what Rapper does is it tells you how the interpreter sees it. Remember right away we, we made a greeting string that had a backslash N in it? And if at the interpreter you just said greeter, greeting, the backslash N appeared. But if you said print of greeting, it became the new line instead. That's the difference between stir and ripper. It's very useful in dynamic coding, so we'll see that. Let me show you. We have a tuple. I do a string of a tuple. It always puts in the parens. I think it's a good style guide. I do a wrapper of the tuple. It looks the same here. But the point of the wrapper is that it should be evaluatable by the interpreter to give back the exact same object. This is not a string. This is a tuple. Eval is a built-in function. You hand it a string, and it will evaluate it as Python code. So this is just gives you a little idea about what's coming later. Is is a good keyword. In another language, it might be called the identity. One object is another object, and it might be represented by three equal sign in a row. But it's going to give you true if they really are the same object, same place in memory. So they really are the same object with two different identifiers. Well, I suppose you can give the same, ob same identifier, but that's a tautology. All three of our sequences are built-in classes or built-in types, built-in container types built-in collection types, all these words work for them. But also, I like the words factory functions that are built in because we don't care that it's a class or a type at this point. If I say tuple of a string, then it's going to take each of the elements that were in that string and make it an element of the resulting tuple. 
If I say list of a string, it does the same thing in a list. Now here I am, I'm taking the list of the string and then I'm applying str to it and we see that str and list are not reverses of each other like eval and repr are. It got more and more complicated. All right, so we looked at all these facilities of our sequences and the facilities that are the same for all three sequence types. Let's see what's different about them. Well, string is pretty obvious, but I should say it anyway. They can only have characters as elements, while lists and tuples can have absolutely any object. Lists and tuples can have other lists and tuples inside, objects of your own classes, anything, anything, anything. Dictionaries, we'll learn about all these. Only lists support item assignment. That means on a list, you can have square, bra square brackets with an index on the left side of the assignment. We've never seen that. That means we are assigning a particular item, the tooth element, to be an A. If I try to do that with a tuple or a string, I'm going to crash. Only lists. This is called mutability. Tuples are not mutable. Strings are not mutable. Lists are mutable. Once you set up a tuple or a string, you cannot change it. Well, each of these namespaces have a different list of facilities that are available for them. Every string is a namespace. I can see what are the facilities available in that string, in any string, by using a dir on the namespace. Now, this is the empty string. That doesn't matter. This is an identifier that was attached to a string. That's good. Or I can even say the built-in class, str. And I will get the same list of strings. These strings represent names that are available to me in the namespace. Now you see, I call, there'll be a bunch that come out that start and end with a double underscore. I didn't include them because we don't care about them yet. I like to call them magic because it's hard to say double underscore, double underscore. So when I say magic, magic, I mean double underscore, magic, double underscore. All right, it's a, it helps talk about it. The rest of these are all very useful. You can capitalize that string. Now be aware that when you say a string, dot capitalized, it makes a new string out of the data in the old string and delivers it to you. It returns a new capitalized version of the old string. Nothing is muted. Mutated. We will look at several of these. You're going to be using them all. You want to be very familiar with doing a dir on a string so that you can, again, take a look at what's available. Tuples. Here we're doing a dir on a tuple. There's a bunch of magic, as always. And there are only two methods, count and index. Now, these are both referencing methods. There is no facility to change the data inside that tuple or to change it and return it to you. Nothing. They are just sitting there like constants. Count and index. We will see that one in a minute. Now, lists have two methods in common with the other sequence type. Count and index. They have a pile of magic. But then they have this large handful of very workhorsey methods, going to give you a whole lot of facility, do a lot of work for you without you having to do a thing. But before we look at lists, which we will look more carefully in the next lab, let's look at these two methods that lists have in common with the other sequence types. For example, list.count. 
you want to do a help anytime you you do a dir to see what's there and then a help on the name space name dot what you want to find out about so here i am seeing what count is about now then regrettably to me in python 3 these helps say self comma you want to ignore that for the time being it's talking about the self you don't have anything to do with the self the interpreter collects the self which is the list that was dot counted on to but you don't care forget about the self for a while here's a value you're going to count that value and this backslash mean front slash means that there are no more required arguments so one two three two one count twos going to count how many twos are in there and there are two twos in that here we see the string dot count now it's a little more complicated because you say s dot count look at it didn't bother with self thank you you say s dot count and this is what you're looking for it's a substring now if you wish you can give a start index and it'll start counting at that index and if you wish some more you can give a comma end index and it will not count at that index or beyond so here we have supercalifragilisticexpialidocious and we're going to count the number of a's in that big long word one two three oh the interpreter's right the interpreter's always right we have the same facility on a tuple mm, this time we have the self this is what we're counting that value we're counting the ones one two let's look at index it is also available in all three types we're going to find the index of value in that list look at that okay value so it's going to look for value and tell you where it is what is the index of that value and that returns the first one by default but if i wish i can give it a start and a stop okay so here's an example i'm looking for two but i'm starting at two zero one two three is my first two beyond a two tuple also has index and we're going to look for one starting at two zero one two three look for one starting at two zero one two three four there it is that's the index four first one beyond the two the strings index you can put in a start and end and you're looking for a substring so we're going to look for li that substring but we're not going to start until index nine zero one two three four five six seven eight nine now we're looking for li so i'm not counting that li nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen hmm. i must have made a mistake the interpreter didn't Okay, you're on for a few exercises. I hope you think they're fun. And I'll see you when you're finished and ready to take a look at the results.